Hello everyone and welcome back to Jackal Educational Channel. So this is the results time and we will discuss some of the questions which came in the weekly environmental science quiz which we conduct every week on Monday on this platform. Yes, in this video we are going to know many interesting facts and learn the concepts of environmental science which are going to help you in the environmental science entrances. So without much delay, let's get started. So those who are new and you want to participate in this quiz contest, you can pause this video and go through all these rules for participation. So let's discuss the questions first. So the first question which came was the presence of nematophores is not seen in case of which of the following organisms or species. And here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, in climbers and lianas and desert plants, the nematophores are not seen but in case of mangroves the nematophores are seen. So what are these nematophores? They are very specialized adaptive structures which are called as respiratory roots or knee roots which are showing negative geotropism. So what is negative geotropism we will discuss. So this is the example of the Avicennia species that is the black mangrove and here you can see these erected structures which are coming out from the ground are the nematophores or the respiratory roots so why they are this kind of so they came out of the ground because to take the oxygen from the atmosphere so this condition are lacking oxygen so in order to take the oxygen these roots are coming out of the ground above the soil to get the oxygen and they show negative geotropism that means all the plants are showing positive geotropism that means geo means earth so towards earth the roots are going down so that is positive geotropism but these roots are coming from the ground above that so they show negative geotropism not going inside the geography that's why they are the nematophores specialized structure to gain the oxygen from the atmosphere let's move to the second question the second question was from the ecological succession the question was at which stage of an ecological succession an ecosystem exhibits total photosynthesis is equal to total respiration. So here the correct option will be option number B. Yes, in the climax stage of the ecological succession, the photosynthesis is equal to the respiration rate. So P is equal to R. So what is this succession? This is a brief example of succession on the bare rock. So which is called a zero shear succession. So succession in which the succession starts, development starts from the place where there is lack of water. It is called a zero shear. It can be in on the rocks. It can be in the desert areas. So here this example shows that the initial organisms to grow, small mosses and lichens, they are called as pioneer stages. So they are the pioneer organism which are developed initially in the succession stage. And then gradually they grow and new species come out like such as small shrubs and herbs. They are called as intermediate stage or the mid seral stage species. And finally when the succession is completed then the big big trees, the shade tolerant trees they develop on that area. So these species are called as climax community or climax species and in this climax stage all the photosynthesis which they are doing is equal to the respiration rate. So I hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the third question. The third question is territoriality is most pronounced in case of which of the following organism. So this is coming from the word territory and here the correct option will be birds. So what is this territoriality? So it is commonly defined as the defense of an area wherein the area being defended is known as the territory. So this is an example where some species, so similar kind of organism of same species, they make a territory or boundary where they can only live and they defend that area from other species. And who are those organisms? For example, wolf, fox, tiger, birds, hyenas and other organisms. So these are the quality of these organisms where they protect their area from the similar individual of the same species. Let's move to the fourth question. The fourth question is from the growth curve which is also a very frequent last question in the environmental science entrances. The question was 
if the population growth follows a logistic curve so this curve shows the logistic curve then it is asking that the maximum sustainable yield is what and here among the four option the correct option will be option number d yes maximum sustainability yield in case of a logistic growth curve is equal to half the carrying capacity so this is very important first of all you should know what is maximum sustainable yield so it is the largest average yield or catch that can theoretically be taken from a species stock over an indefinite period under constant environmental condition so here you should know that for calculating the maximum sustainability yield the environmental condition should be constant and from that population the maximum catch or maximum growth or population yield which can be theoretically be taken without any environmental disturbance for an indefinite period is called as maximum sustainable yield and the formula for calculating the rate of change of population is dn by dt is equal to small r capital n multiplied by k minus n by k where k is the carrying capacity n is the number of organisms or population so here in this graph you can see this position is where the maximum sustainable yield is formed which is half the carrying capacity so as you can see here the carrying capacity is this point the topmost point and the half of that will give the maximum sustainability yield so you can see the half of this graph is this point so k by 2 will give the maximum sustainability yield that is half the carrying capacity let's move to the fifth question the fifth question is on your screen the question was identify the incorrect statement about koalas and here the incorrect statement will be none of these because all these statements are correct regarding the koalas so what are these statements you should also know these koalas are herbivorous in nature so they feed typically on leaves and twigs of the plants mostly the eucalyptus forest and these animals are found in australia mostly they are arboreal animals so what is the meaning of arboreal that means those animals which spend their most of the time on the trees so they are arboreal animal and koalas are not bears so the name is given as koala bear but they are not the category of koala bear they are marsupials organism so what are marsupials the marsupials are the infra class of the mammalia whose members are born incompletely developed so these organisms are born incompletely developed or underdeveloped you can say and they are typically carried in the pouch of their mother's belly for example kangaroos and here you can see koalas also are the marsupials but you should note that all marsupials they don't have the pouches on their mother's belly let's move to the sixth question the sixth question is from the solid waste management this is also important question when sewage is applied continuously on a piece of land the soil pores may get filled up and clogged which is known as what kind of process and here the correct option will be option number a this is known as sewage sickness of the land for example this is the land where the sewage is continuously poured so what will happen is the pores inside the soil will be clogged will be blocked and as a result oxygen will not be able to move from or towards the soil and they all these bad things which are coming from the sewage will deteriorate the soil making the pores clogged which will cause the sickness of the land that is known as sewage sickness of the land i hope you are able to understand let's move to the seventh question seventh question is out of the following geomorphic processes which one is associated with the work of glaciers so these were the geomorphic processes and the correct option for this question will be plucking yes what is this plucking so plucking occurs when the rocks and stones become frozen to the base or sides of the glacier for example this white portion here in this picture are the glacier but the rocks and stone which are present on the base or the side so you can see here dot dot black color are given these are the rocks or stones which are present in the base or sides of this glacier they become frozen so when they are frozen they are plugged off from the ground plugged off means they are detached from the ground or rock surface and the glacier moves towards the other direction leaving behind a rough sharp points protruding landscape so as you can see in this picture when the rocks which are frozen and then the ice moves it 
leaves the protruding landscape so they are pointed shapes because the glacier has moved and the rocks are now shown in the case so now we will go to the eighth question i hope you are able to clear this eighth question was very simple in this quiz contest the eighth question was the chemicals which are used in the disinfection of the water are what and here the correct answer will be option number a chlorine and ozone these two are the chemicals which are used for the disinfection of the water and mostly used for the disinfection of the drinking water coming to the ninth question this was very very interesting question the question was dash are a group of tactical use chemicals used by the united states military in the southwest asia during the vietnam war and the correct option will be the rainbow herbicide yes the rainbow herbicides are the chemicals which are used by united states military so as you can see in this picture that the herbicides are sprayed from the united states on the southeast asia so these are the forest cover where the enemies of usa were taking shelter or hiding so in order to not give the shelter not give the hiding place what the us military did they sprayed the rainbow herbicides as a result all the trees died and the enemies were not able to get the shelter or hiding points so i hope it was interesting coming to the final question the 10th question was the eco sensitive zones or ecz's which are called are declared by the ministry of environment forest and climate change of government of india under which of the following provisions and here the correct option will be they are under the provisions of environment protection act of 1986 and what are these areas these areas are within 10 kilometers around protected areas national parks and wildlife sanctuaries because they are very very fragile and very sensitive for example if there is a national park so within the 10 km around those area will be called as ecological sensitive zones or eco sensitive zones in order to protect the species so now it's time to reveal the results for this quiz contest so five of you have secured 10 out of 10 marks and they are chaitrali akshay khadija samreen geeta sharma and alka jain so congratulations to all of you and other participants who have also done well are payal kundu fatima muhammad diksha kumari jyoti tashkin khan sohawani and rakhi tyagi so keep it up guys and keep participating to be the top performer of the month and if you like this don't forget to like and subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed till now